you leave it a little bit loose. All right. Now it's time to wrap your head. You're almost done. Okay? Okay. Okay, Madison, we're going to wrap your head. You're almost ready to go, okay? okay? Just go ahead and sit straight. And I'm going to try to move the hair out of the way as I go around wrapping the head. You want to do this lightly. You don't want to apply too much pressure as you go around the patient's head. This tends to tighten over time. And we don't want to put too much pressure on the electrodes, especially the ones on the forehead. Okay, make sure we stay away from the ears. And I also like to, Madison, can you turn your head a little bit? I like to go over the wire a few times and then come underneath the wire, sort of securing it down. And you'll be using a lot of tape when you do a head wrap. If you want it to stay on, tape is your friend. Go ahead and put your head straight. You will usually need at least two rolls of the elastomol head wrap. So here I am starting the second roll. Again, not making it too tight. Coming down in the back. And then, if you can turn your head to the left, I like to take the roll and go underneath this brain net strap here, securing it down in the back. And then turn your head the other way, and I'll do the same on the other side. And that really helps to keep the head wrap on the patient, especially at night when they're moving around a lot, it, sometimes it tends to lift up. So this helps keep it in place. Just a couple more pieces of tape. How's it feeling? Good. Did it hurt? Is it bothering you anywhere? No. Okay, good. Okay, and I'm going to just finish it off with some extra tape. You can also give the patient and the family extra tape and extra head wrap. So if they need to add a little bit more, they can. Okay, and one more finishing touch. Take a few of your sticky gauze or cover roll stretch and tape those down to the face and it really helps hold the wrap down in the front. Okay, and there you have it. Now to remove the electrodes, first we're going to remove the head wrap. You can just take the tape. There's a couple pieces of tape that I put on the face. You do not want to use scissors when doing this because you may accidentally cut one of the wires. And they sometimes are reusable wires, so we just want to be safe. Did I pull some hair? Yeah. Sorry. Okay, go ahead and rest your head down, hon. Turn your head to the right. I'm going to start taking this stuff off of you. Are you ready to get this off? Yeah. I bet. How'd you do? Did Great. you do okay? Yeah. All right. Turn your head to the left. Just going to take the chin strap off, give you a little breather there. Okay. I'm going to put some gloves on and I'll use some collodion remover, which is very helpful taking the sticky part of the electrode or sticky part of the cover roll stretch off. 
of the electrode and it's much easier to remove. You can squirt a little bit on a gauze square. Go ahead and close your eyes, Madison. Saturate each section. And once they're saturated with the collodion remover, let's go ahead and peel them off. And just go through each step. They come off very easily. We've disconnected the patient and now it's time to download the recording for your review. First, unzip the recorder pouch. Plug in your download amplifier cable. Now it shows that our patient name is popping up on the screen here. Go ahead and click on download recording. And then as you see the prompts, you're going to click yes. This prompt says download the following recording from the recorder. And now your patient's EEG is being downloaded to the laptop for your review at a later time. Disposable electrodes are also available in BrainNet colors. This allows the patient to disconnect at home. They can cut the electrode wires and remove the BrainNet at the end of the study. Then bring the recording equipment back to the lab. This is convenient for the patient and saves staff time disconnecting the electrodes. An alternative brain net model you may want to consider for your ambulatory EEGs is the original model. This brain net has electrode placement holes for 13 recording electrodes, instead of 19 as in the full 1020 setup. This model still allows very good coverage of the brain to identify seizures, as well as generalized or hemispheric abnormalities. The sleep brain net is ideal for the sleep lab or in-home sleep studies. Cadwell also offers a polysomnography amplifier with sleep brain net colors. Both the sleep brain net and the Cadwell PSG amplifier conform to the latest AASM nomenclature guidelines. In addition, Cadwell just introduced the 32 channel ambulatory amplifier, which allows for added inputs for either EEG or PSG studies. I hope this instructional video has been helpful. Now you have the tools to use the brain net template and the Cadwell EZ ambulatory system.